Joe Johnson countered by moving John B. Hood's corps from the left flank to the right on June 22nd. Union artillery and swampy terrain thwarted Hood's attack and forced him to withdraw with costly casualties. This marked one of the key battles in Sherman's march to sea. Now let's fast forward to 2017. So Jay is right there with me, doing a little detecting today. Um, right down in the hole there, about four inches, it gave about a 70 signal. And it's a fired infield bullet from the Civil War. So we're gonna keep on going and see if we find anything else. There's a lot more area to cover. It's a chess piece. This is the bottom of the bullet right there and it's carved. You see the top and then they carved around it. That is sweet. It gave an awesome signal on the T2. We're just gonna keep going. Got this whole area to cover. A lot of history at this site. right there. Dropped pistol ball. Sweet. Imagine getting hot shot by that thing. That would leave a mark for sure. Let's keep going. Bullet, I think. There it is. What'd you get? Canister shot. Canister? Looks sweet. It means there's it artillery in here, so. Oh yeah, that's a good sign. Yeah. Moments later, after saying artillery was in the area, this happened. All right, so we're out in the woods right here, and we just got a shell. I see it right down there. It's the iron end right there. Well, we just, oh my gosh. We just saw the Sabbat too, so yep. yeah. Yeah, right there. Sabbat's right there. <laughs> oh my. I can't believe it, dude. I gave a solid 28 signal on this. He too. When you know you got a good shell on. Shoot. Yeah, dude, it's a Hoshkiss. I see it. Just take your time. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. This is so pretty. This is so exciting.
here, get in there. Here's the sabbat right there. Oh my god. <laughs> oh. oh, it's breaking loose. Here it comes. Here it comes. And there's our shell right there. Oh, it's the back of one. Isn't it? Yeah, it's the back of a shell. It's not the full thing, but... Still a shell fragment. <laughs> Big fragment. It's got the full sabot on it and everything. <laughs> Good thought. Heck yeah. Let's see. That was deep, too. Holy crap. What do you say about good foot? Oh yeah. All Pretty day. shallow actually for a shell. Yeah, for a shell it's really shallow. Awesome, you see the, the lead sabot that goes around it right there. I'm shaking right now, that's, that's awesome. Awesome. Really good shape too, we're still going. I'm going at it with, still with the T2, that's what I found my shell with, so I'm gonna keep going. Okay. Just got a fuse to a shell. See, it's been exploded and mangled up, but. That's sweet to say the least. All right, guys, so uh, currently I'm at the house right now. Um, I got back yesterday afternoon um, from digging the Hotchkiss shell. When I came back, I actually cleaned the inside of it and I could see um, where the fuse output was, um, where it exploded, on which side of the shell it exploded, and it also did have the full sabot, which was very cool as well. But that made me kind of nervous because I knew when I was preserving it, I have to you know, do electrolysis on both ends and I have to leave the sabot out of water. Um, so, as you can see behind me here, I have my battery charger and I'm doing a process called electrolysis on it. And you can see it's, uh, it's currently in the process. I've, I'm currently running uh, 10 amps on the battery charger. And I put some baking soda in the water um, as my elixir. And then I've got two steel bars on the side for the sacrificial metal. The top portion's already been done. You can see where the different parts of the shell is. The top part exploded. And then you can also see below, I was really trying to keep the sabot from touching any of the wires or anything like that. But you can see when I did the top part, I mean the top part only has a little bit of iron. And when I, was, uh, when I had the wire connected to it, some of it was accidentally touching the uh, lead sabot as you can see on the top gray part which is um, right there on the top. So it did touch it a little bit, not too bad. I mean the other side is perfect. You can see the white patina on it but it did touch it a little bit and then what I'm going to do after this is put some uh, Gimpler's Rust Converter on it and it'll look um, museum grade. I'll throw up a video of uh, when it's done here in just All right, a second. so are you ready to see how the shell turned out? I um, finally got it out of electrolysis and put some Gimpler's Rust Converter on it and it looks great. Check it out. There it is. All cleaned up. You can see there's a little bit of Gimpler's Rust Converter that's uh, still drying on the inside but process is complete. I preserved the sabot in the middle as well. And you see the groove, the flame grooves for when it was fired out of the cannon. Top part exploded. This is where it had the case shot and um, the fuse was there as well. And the bursting charge. Overall, it's a great piece of history. I can't wait to include it in the collection. and um, It's just awesome that I was able to save this. So... Couldn't have been any happier that it turned out this way. I'm so happy that I was able to save it though, and um, thank you so much for tuning in to um, this week's episode of Depths of History. It's just awesome to be able to retrieve these pieces of history. This is from 153 years ago, it was fired out of a cannon, so couldn't be happier with it, and it's a great find, and I just can't wait to find more. So until the next episode, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed it. And use my discount code if you're looking to get a metal detector on Technetics Direct. But 
This was found with the Technetics T2. I love that machine. And until the next episode, thanks for watching.